Hey guys, welcome. So now we're going to talk about the next judge, E. Hood. E. Hood. Um, that is the next judge we're going to go into. First, I like to look at the character's name because um, I noticed that the character's name says a lot about the person and and why God called them. So his name means uh, love, pleasant, and united. So that is the name. That's what his. That's his character: loving, pleasant, and united. Bring the people back to God. So he is. He is the next judge. So we're gonna see him in Judges three. Um, 12 through 30, also chapter 4 and 1. Um, and the oppressor is the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Alkalites. And um, the length of op the oppression was 18 years. So the, the, the last judge was 8 years, this one is 18 years. And the period of the rest of judgeship is 80 years. So we're going to look at all of this. So, uh, Judges 3, um, this was, um, the other character, Othaniel. So, now we're moving on to Ehud. Uh, I think it's pronounced with Ehud. And again, his name means love, pleasant, and un united. So, again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and because they did this evil, the Lord gave uh, Eglon, king of Moab, power over Israel, getting the Amramites and the Alchemites to join them. So Eglon came and attacked Israel and took possession of the city of Psalms. The Israelites were subjected to Eglon, king of Moab, for 18 years. Again, the Israelites cried out to the Lord, and then their oppression, they cried out to the Lord, and he gave them a deliverer named Ehud, a left man, a left-handed man, the son of Ger, um, the Benjamite. So he's from the tribe of Benjamite. I don't know if I went over that. Um, the Israelites sent him with troop tribute to Eglon. So this is where he, you know, is located. I have a little map. And this is where he would be over here. And now we'll continue to read. Um, so he's the king of Moab. So in Judge 6, uh, 3, 16, it says, Now Ehud uh, had made a double-edged sword, about a cubit long, which he strapped to his thigh. Under his clothing, he presented the, the tribute to Eglon, king of Moab, uh, who was a very fat man. And after... Ehud oppressed, uh, um, present the tribe uh, tribute he sent on their way, those who had carried it. But on reaching the stone images near Gelad, he himself went back to Eglon and said, Your Majesty, I have a secret message for you. And the king said to his attendants, Leave us, and they all left. So Ehud uh, then approached him while he was sitting alone in the upper room of his palace and said, I have a message uh, from God for you. As the king rose from his seat, Elho reached with his left hand and drew the sword from his right thigh and plunged it into the king's belly. And even the handle sank in after the blade and his bowels discharged. Elho did not pull the sword out and the fat closed in over it and Elho went out to the uh, porch and he shut the door to the upper room behind him and locked locked them so after he had gone the servants came and found the door of the upper room locked and they said he must be relieving himself in the inner room of this palace they waited to the point of embarrassment but when he did not open the door of the room, uh, they took a key and locked them, unlocked them. And there they saw the Lord fallen in the floor dead. And while they waited, Ehud got away. 
So he snuck out, and he passed by the stony images, and escaped to、uh, Sirar. When he arrived there, he blew a trumpet in the hill of Irum, and the Israelites went down with him from the hills, with him leading them. He said, "Follow me," and he ordered, "For the Lord has given Moab your enemy into your hands." And so they followed him down and took possession of the the fords of the Jordan that fled to Moab, and they allowed no one to cross over. At that time, they struck down about ten thousand Moabites, all virgins and strong. Not one escaped. That day, Moab was made. A subject to Israel, and the land had peace for eighty years.、Um, Shamgar, after Ehud、um, came, Shamgar, son of Ath- Athan, who struck down six hundred Philistines with a an ox god, he too saved Israel. So there you have it. That's your second judge. And again, these are the people of the Moabites.、Um, The Moabites, the、uh, Amorites, and go, going previously to the Book of Judges, when each tribe goes in to take possession of the land of different parts of the land, this is part of their inheritance. And if they're, they're faithful and do what the Lord that their God tells them, God is with them. But they didn't completely destroy the enemy, and so this is why. And they became they, these people became a snare, a trap to them, and they started to worship and serve other gods. We see that formally,、um, like the main part of you know the first part of the book of Judges. You see that that is exactly what they're doing. And then new judges rise, raises. They cry out to the Lord. New judges rise, and they repent and they serve the Lord. So we see. Here in four one, let's take a look at that. So again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and now Ehud was dead. So then another judge had to raise up, and that's Deborah. We'll get into Deborah, which, by the way, is one of my favorite、uh, judges. She stands out. But this one, I've never, so I, I never really paid attention to this previous this judge right here. And、um, it's crazy, crazy story, right? Uh, let me know in in the comments below what you guys think about the story. So I hope to see you guys next time. Peace.